Hello friends of Golf Course Quality Fertilizer. We're going to talk about grubs today because uh, I've been seeing grub damage a little later than we normally start to see grub damage. This is the third case I've seen so far. Um, and you know grubs are identified in a few different ways of if you have an issue with them. Uh, let's talk about primary damage first. Primary damage is when the grubs themselves are eating so much of the roots of the grass that the grass is suffering. Uh, and we can see in this area here, uh, it's dry here in this zone. Um, and so what we do is we kind of pull on the grass and if it lifts up easily, uh, and then you can see them. You can literally see the grubs there. Look at this guy, he's trying to, trying to hide from me over here. But, uh, so that's called primary damage when they're actually affecting the grass themselves. Primary damage means that <clears throat> you have more than 12 grubs per square foot, uh, and then they can eat up enough of the root system to make the grass suffer itself. Uh, and that's not really as common as we see. You'll see it here and there. Neighbors had an experience, or each person's had their experience through the years when they're at this level. Um, and normally we're seeing this damage more towards the middle of September. Now we're here at the beginning of October, uh, and we're starting to see the damage now. Uh, and that's probably because we're about two weeks behind as far as when beetles start doing their thing and all that stuff. And so these are the grubs. And so typically each year, grubs actually only affect the turf uh, during times between about middle of August to about the end of October is when you're going to see grub damage. Uh, and primary damage being this one where we're seeing it actually hurt the turf uh, in this area. And feeding on those roots so much that they're making it tough for the turf to survive and we've been really dry this fall uh, so far we had our first rain in a long time last night it wasn't even that much rain or yesterday I'll say um, and so it's been hard to determine if you're having grubs from primary damage because the grass has been dry anyway so you know if you see a really dry zone kind of tug on that grass if it peels up like carpet like this one did uh, then that means you have primary grub damage all right so let's go to another area. We're going to look at a little bit of secondary damage with some primary damage. And that is when you see uh, varmints. That could be moles. And remember, moles does not mean you have grubs. Uh, they also feed on earthworms. So it's important to, to know that and not automatically do a grub control uh, when we're seeing moles, right? Because, I mean, especially like I said, you only see grubs damaging uh, typically in the fall time and so yeah there is a few grubs that are getting ready to turn into beetles that might be fed on but that's not going to be their main food source earthworms is going to be the main food source uh, for moles during the spring and most time during the season now here is another spot now you can see and it looks like birds must have been making all these little weird holes going after the grubs uh, which is pretty strange. I've, I actually don't see that very often, but birds do feed on grubs if they can find them and smell them out. So we got all these little tiny holes here. Uh, and if we pull up the gr grass here, which is comes up super easy, uh, we can see we got grubs right there as well. And that would be considered secondary damage. So secondary damage is when you have less than, um, and this looks like a combination of both, but less than uh, a dozen grubs in a square foot in healthy turf, uh, but you're bringing in skunks, that's a big indicator. You see skunks digging in your yard, 100% they're going after some grubs. Uh, you also have um, <clears throat> uh, raccoons, they will peel up the turf uh, as well and feed on those grubs, and of course moles as well. So those guys are your, your secondary damage guys, and you'll see them digging around. Uh, so when it comes to moles, you'll notice their pattern will change from these long tunnels that are wying off left and right and whatever, which are called searcher tunnels, to if they hit a patch of grubs, it just turns into mass chaos. There's just a bunch of ground all in a certain spot that's all been pushed up in every which direction. That's when a mole is going after grubs. Uh, and in the fall, they love to feed on them because they got to fatten up for the, the long winter ahead. Uh, anytime the ground loses its thaw, they'll come up and feed on earthworms during the, the winter time, but uh, they do tend to go uh, into hibernation if they have to uh, in order for them to survive. So 
Got a bunch of little holes all along this whole side. Tons of grubs in, in this little zone here. And so that's what grubs are. They're beetles. They hatch around the 1st of August on a typical year. That's an average. Depends on soil temps and stuff. This year was a little later. Uh, they will feed on the turf and get bigger in their patch because a, a beetle will come and lay all 100 eggs in one spot. Then those eggs will hatch and they'll start to spread out. And that's why we get patches when we see grub damage. Uh, and they'll start feeding on the turf. And then if there's a high enough number that survived from that laying of the eggs, then you'll actually see grub damage. Now, this is important to know as well. If you're digging up a plant and you find one grub here and there, that does not mean you need to do grub control, right? Everybody has some grubs in their lawn. It's about the thresholds, and that's what grass is a lot about. It's about thresholds. Uh, what can we handle and what we can't handle? And so if there's a bunch of grubs that are above our threshold and starting to hurt our turf, then we might need to implement a grub control into our program. Uh, we use a celeprin. I would suggest everybody uses a celeprin for grub control. Reason why is because a celeprin is a new insecticide which is actually doesn't even have a caution label on it from the EPA. It's so safe, it's safer than hand soap, uh, which is awesome. Uh, there's no in other insecticides that I know of out there that are that safe, uh, and especially something we apply into our lawn. Second reason why I love to use that is it's in a, a systemic insecticide. So that means that when it gets laid down into the turf, it actually gets absorbed into the root system and makes the grass that they're feeding on, the roots and the grass itself, to become toxic to that insect, which is pretty awesome. That's pretty bulletproof. What I love about a celeprin too is timing is not as important as well. When you're using Merit, Mach 2, and Grub X, it has to be applied when the grub is at a certain uh, life stage. These guys here are too mature. So if you can throw down, if you throw down Grub X or something like that, or Mach 2, you're not going to be able to kill these guys. It won't hurt them at all. And so um, that's what I like about the Acelaprin is I could even put it down in May and it's going to affect a grub at any stage of life through the entire season. So that's another thing. Uh, and it doesn't affect honeybees. So honeybees are safe with Acelaprin. That's my biggest one. That's the one that flipped it on ahead for me is that uh, a celeprin does not hurt honeybees, and we need honeybees to do lots of things, and they're very important. So uh, the more I can protect them, uh, the better. So that's grub damage right there. Look, it looks like some birds were pecking around in these guys uh, in order to get this. So that's interesting. I'm sure when I ask the customer if he's seen a lot of birds out there, he probably has uh, at certain stages. Not sure.